Okay, I've just uh, come up on this flat area here, crossing from over there. The car's way back there. I've walked a long ways. <laughs> Didn't intend to. But hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Look at this. Very interesting flat area. Really out in the lava fields now. I just keep promising myself I'm going to go one ridge further. I just keep on going. It's hard to walk, especially in these cheap boots that keep falling apart. I have to keep applying the shoe glue to hold them together. That's what I get for buying the cheapest hiking boots I can find. <laughs> Famous footwear. I'm getting tired. <sighs> so often the case these days. They don't last very long. Hey, but I'm still out doing it. While it's lasting. I guess that's uh one of the one of the reasons for, for the peace that I feel. You can see where it's dragging its tail along with it. Here's up here. Lizard tracks. It's creeping along the edge here, probably looking for insects to eat. Attempting to avoid becoming food for something else. Okay. I gotta call it quits here. Ah. It's a strange thing. I don't feel good physically, but I feel good in every other way. I really reached a, a curious point of life where I feel the uh, bodily uh, faculty uh, de decreasing while the uh, mental and, uh, what's the word for it? Personal? Is there such thing as a personal faculty? Ah, found it balloon. I always find at least three or four of these when I'm hiking in the desert. And the enemy, the plastic is my great enemy, so I always pick these up and try them back. I, oh, I didn't intend to go far from the car. I didn't bring anything. I'll just stuff it in my pocket. People inflate these in parties in cities. Let them fly away. And then they wind up out here hundreds of miles in the desert. And they never disappear. Stuff that in my pocket. Look at that. What is it? Is it a is it a personal faculty? Look at this. What a great place to sit. Just take a 360 on this. I think you can get a little mixed up in this area. Won't work for the fact that you can see the mountains so easily. I wonder if I can make that stand there. be a good time, place to do the uh, good life meditation. Oh, <sighs> Got to do it while the uh, energy and faculty are there. I like that word faculty. Not the you know the stu student body faculty or anything like that, but the concept of the ability. And I've got pricklies in my hair. Ah. Oh, It's like, and I don't want, I don't want to sound like I'm getting again too wooey, but you know, it's a, coming to a point, and I feel like I'm, I want to, if I was addressing this to my daughter or grandchildren or something like that, it sounds less indulgent. 
but it's like, uh, you know, I'm 52 or 53, not sure which, and life has been a journey of, uh, of, of expending, you know, enormous quantities of energy, truly burning the candle at both ends. And a lot of that time was spent uh, covering up just through busyness the uh, emptiness that, that dwelled below it all, the emptiness that's out here. The emptiness that uh, that is pretty fearful until you come to uh, spend more time with it and spend time living, you know, with it directly. And that's the emptiness that I've come to call the great indifference. And um, I think you could spend your whole life doing things to distract yourself from that. And I think all life does that. That's a distinguishing factor of life is moving forward with some purpose, purposeful aim that where the purpose is perhaps little more than the perpetuation of our genes. When we get up to animals like ourselves, maybe exclusively ourselves, we have the ability to uh, look, at, look around and think about the big world. We recognize that there appears to be no meaning out there, so we uh, invent systems of meaning and teach them to our kids reinforce them in our communities, codify them in our law, make them a part of our deepest culture. And in a way, we live our lives busily productive with a sense of meaning that is in opposition or in spite of the uh, emptiness that's out there. Now, that hasn't been the way that I've wanted to go, that, that I wound up going. I, I started down that road, and I, and I wound up giving that up. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not a member of my society and that I don't abide my society's customs and laws. I do, and I do enjoy them, and I do, the, I do appreciate the distraction they give. Coming to places like this alone, especially at night, is a fearful thing for me. You know, listening, you know, shutting up for a minute. and opening my eyes to all this. It almost makes me want to run in a way. I guess if you had a code, if you had a system that you could lay on top of this, this indifference out here, if you had a system, then you could say, wow, this is just evidence of that system. This is, this is a you know, realization of that grandeur. But if you don't have that, then all you're left with is this. So, but in the process, I've wound up creating something that I call the good life, which is a code, a system, yet it's not dogmatic. It's evidenced through personal effort rather than uh, teaching. And that's changed things for me. It's... Uh, it's not that I was unhappy or anything before. It was that I, I was too distracted to even think about it. But now things are more deliberate. That's the right. That's a good word for it. Life is deliberate. Life is more deliberate, and more enjoyable, and more meaningful. With a purpose that I've created for myself which is the purpose of virtue, to live a virtuous life according to the code that I developed, which are the seven principles, towards the ends that I prescribe for myself, which are the three objectives, and in recognition of the uh, overarching responsibility to, have, uh, to respect the rights of the individual. So let's go through it. The Good Life Meditation for this day, which I believe is the today. I can't remember the day, so I won't say it. I'll put it up on the screen. So uh, the good life meditation consists of uh, three components. There's the uh, affirmation of human rights, the uh, three objectives, and the seven principles. The human rights piece is basically stating that uh, the rights of the individual shall not be subjugated 
at the for the uh, at you know for the for the sake of the of the greater of the many that we should pursue social good but not at the expense of, of the inherent rights of the individual now in, in absence of my own code of, of rights I lean on um, a very good work which I think is the Bill of Rights in our United in my United States the Constitution so you know not necessarily all the pieces there but for the most part yeah and boil it down it just means pursue 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 the good of the many but don't uh, throw the little guy under the bus maybe one day I'll get that better okay, that's three objectives the first is to uh, develop and maintain good sound principles these are the seven I'll come to in just a moment and this is an active process this is where the good life is something that is developed by oneself through input and education and experience in the world and with what others have to say and talk, teach and then to apply that and uh, test it and refine it. Two, the uh, execution of good emotional reactions. Being able to uh, control the consumption of our emotions, which come sometimes seemingly from nowhere. The Stokes would describe the uh, pre-passion and the passion. The pre-passion being that immediate sensation that you have when something happens and that first flush of emotion rises. We can't do anything about that. That just happens. But what we can do is decide how we'll respond to that. And that's the uh, passion. And the, with the pursuit of the objective of controlling uh, or having good emotional reactions, we seek to observe the pre-passion when it happens, note it for what it is, and then instead of running with it, you know, grabbing the scissors and running across the stage, <laughs> like that old Pendulot story, Instead of doing that, we see it, and then we exercise our will and our power of temperance to uh, control it and respond in a more mature fashion. You know, that happened to me yesterday. I was in a meeting and uh, getting ready to come out here <clears throat> a couple of hours away from this, and uh, two unexpected uh, you know, emergency things came up, which were uh, laid upon me to get them done right away, and I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get out at 4.30, which is my quitting time. And... A bit of panic rose in me because I really wanted to go. I, you know, I work hard for this to, to be able to take this day and do this, and I could feel that pre-passion rising. I could sense that my my boss could feel it too, and at that moment I caught sight of it. I said, "Wait a minute, this here it is. I'm going to exercise some control on this," and I did, and I brought myself back into even though inside I was churning and welling up, I I was able to uh, get control of myself, and this is this is very similar to. Uh, a physical, you know, reaction. So, you know, being able to, if you train yourself physically, when something happens, you can more nimbly respond and react and have the endurance to withstand it. That's exactly what it's like you do when you do this long enough. And I was actually able to do it. I could tell that I gave off some impression that of, pa of immediate panic, but I got that under control and, and back in shape. That's what exercising good emotional reactions is about, and doing that in a in a consistent basis. Wow, what a beautiful fly! Wow, it's as black, it must be evolution in action. It's as black as these volcanic rocks. Maybe even a new species, who knows. So three, the uh, performance of good, for third objective is the performance of good actions in life. Just do good things. You know, pick up a mylar balloon you find laying in the desert. Uh, hold the door open for someone. Clean up if someone leaves a mess in the kitchen at work. You know, wipe it off. You know, reset the timer on the microwave to zero. Offer a smile, a sincere smile to a stranger. Be attentive to uh, to the needs of others. <sighs> this desert is so beautiful. Seven principles. Principle number one is the uh, principle of of the atomic principle, which simply states that everything in the universe is made of bits and pieces. All these little, all these little bits here, you know, it's made of molecules, compounds, molecules, 
atoms, subatomic particles, and on and on. It's just flowing and changing and dissolving and disintegrating. Likewise, you and me. It won't be much longer. Be uh, like uh, this dust. Maybe never again to be organic compounds again. You know, substance probably though. Cycling around. That recognition that everything is made of bits and pieces that are changing. What was yesterday is something else today, and again something else tomorrow, is uh, helpful in keeping us, uh, our minds, current with the immediacy of the moment and cognizant of the changing uh, nature of things. Two, the uh, principle of nature. The principle of nature simply describes that everything in the universe has a particular nature. You know, this volcanic stone is uh, dark and solid, in, impervious to, uh, to most stresses. You know, maybe maybe water can maybe a little bit porous given its hold the holes. It's not sentient. Doesn't grow. It doesn't live. It dissolves. Eventually, to nothing. Principle of the sidewinder snake that I saw the tracks back there for our. It, it's born. It grows. It feeds. It reproduces. It slithers in its slither in its strange sidewindery way. You know, these plants over here, they're tough and resilient to this old harsh desert environment. They grow, they rooted, photosynthesize, reproduce. Nature of sand down there, I see a little dune, is to flow and, you know, blow in the wind and reach a, a point of fineness to maybe eventually congeal, you know, or come be compacted back down into sandstone or something to recycle again. The nature of uh, me is to be born, to grow, to learn, to live, to marry, to reproduce, be a father and a husband and a, a co-worker, maybe even a friend to some. I tend to not be much of a friend though. And to, uh, to go to places like this alone and to think. And to uh, maybe jot some things down or just turn on the camera. Leave it at that. And to prepare for death. To be ready for death at every moment. And to be ready to execute my principles in the pursuit of virtue. Someone asked me, what is the difference between the atomic principle and the na principle of nature? The atomic principle speaks to the composition of things. The principle of nature speaks to their utility, disposition, their, their function. It's the difference between what it is and what it does, or what it, what it uh, exudes, <laughs> if, it, if, the, if it exudes some, some uh, being, mainly living things. The uh, third is the social principle. Sorry if I'm getting so meditative. I'm just drifting away in this place. And the heat is rising. This is really why I think, uh, you know, people come, you know, especially the, the mystics and the like, would come to lonely places like this, desolate places like this. It does something to you. And you have to come alone to do it. And you have to push through the difficulty Temper, you have to use to exercise temperance to get through the fear, to get out to places like this alone. So the social principle. Human beings are social animals. We need one another. And our best ends are social ends. We do live well when we're working towards the benefit of one another. Well, all the while protecting the rights of the individual. Feels so good out here, man. Sorry if I'm kind of drifting away. If I feel like I'm almost going to sleep while my eyes are wide open. 
It's like drifting into a dream out here. Such silence. Four. The principle of temperance. Temperance is the execution of will to control our consumption. And that consumption, typically, when we think of temperance, we think of drink, alcohol in particular. But it also applies to food. It also applies to other things, like work and play and exercise and distractions, watching TV. It's about everything. I like to think of it now as temperance is the willful control also of the consumption of emotions. Emotions arise, we can kind of consume them in a way, you know. We feel mm -hmm. love rise and we, we can kind of consume it and run with it and become arduous and, ard ar that's not the right word, you know what I mean, loving and kind of you can go overboard, you know. It doesn't mean you shouldn't, it just can. There's time and place for it. Likewise, anger, particularly anger, frustration, resentment, you know, envy, those types of things, those types of emotions, you have to, it's really in our best interest to exercise temperance with regard to those things, to control our consumption of those things. And great virtue can be found in, in, in being able to do that. You become stronger, develop your, your musculature of, 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 of life, musculature of, of will. Five, the great indifference, what this is. Recognizing the great indifference by coming out to it and exposing oneself. Listening and being able to soak it up and then to recognize that it doesn't appear that there's anything out there other than what we uh, uh, ascribe to it. You know, if we want to believe that there's deity out there, then we, we can say so. But uh, no one's been able to show any evidence that there really is anything out there. It seems to be just this. What that means is that we're alone. But there's good news, we have each other. And we have our ability to form communities and be partners and friends and lovers and uh, companions to build things out of that and to develop meaning from that. The great indifference is a, is a reminder of uh, our obligation and responsibility to develop our own good principles, to ratify those through our, our, the execution of reason and the examination of reality by forecasting what we what might happen based on what we know. And if it doesn't happen that way, then re-examining our, our, our assumptions and our, our forecasting capabilities and our ideas. Great indifference is basically, uh, <laughs> it's nothing more than cutting ourselves loose from, uh, from parenthood uh, to, be, uh, to be fully mature and grown adults on our own with one another. And these flies. <laughs> Five, uh, six, reason, the governing faculty, the force by which we uh, come to understand the world. We look at the world, we, we see the facts, we make sense of it, we make models to predict what happens, explain what happens, and then refine those through observation and improve our understanding of the world. Reason is the governing faculty. And finally, seven, virtue, the purpose of life. Virtue is... Uh, as I define it, the improvement of well-being while respecting the rights of the individual. Well-being is easily uh, figured out, you know, we, something we can all agree on. You know, things are like clean water, good affordable education, good affordable health care, the protection of our natural environments, cultivation of uh, improved communication between the sexes, between cultures, between uh, nations, between species perhaps. 
all of these things and more. When we recognize what they are and we agree to follow those and pursue those, then we're on the path to virtue, which is the improvement of well-being. All while respecting the rights of the individual. So there then is the good life. It's nothing more than a, a structure and a, a, a way of living. It's a, a way of moving through life with recognizing that everything is bits and pieces, flowing and changing and becoming something else, that everything and everyone has a particular nature, that uh, social ends are the best ends, that uh, the uh, great end, that the uh, temperance is the execution of, uh, of controlled consumption of emotions and the controlled consumption of, uh, uh, of, of everything. It was basically, it's controlled consumption. We live better that way. And that um, the great indifference reminds us that all we have is really ourselves and one another and uh, the communities that we create and, and abide. And that uh, reason is the governing faculty, the force by which we can understand and, and make good observations, good models, and good principles and uh, work together to make the world a better place, which in the result end is virtue. And that's basically it. So I think for now I'm going to go ahead and stop. Let me flip the camera around for a second. You guys can have a look. Such a landscape. Such a place. Such wildness. Have a great life. <laughs>